What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be working on my brand new 2023 BMW M4. Now, I know you guys have probably seen bits and pieces of this car in some of the videos, but today is the day we're actually going to start working on this car. So basically, 2023 G82 M4 smashed in the front, smashed in the back. But man, I got to say, I love this spec right here. This is the frozen white metallic from BMW. It is an individual color. It's not a wrap or anything like that. I know a couple of people asked me already if this is wrapped, but no, it is a matte paint job straight from the factory, which is pretty crazy. It's like a $4,500 option, which I don't know if I'm a fan of it just yet. I've heard a lot of bad things about matte. It's super hard to clean. And like, if you scratch it, you can't actually buff it. You can't really do much to the paint. So if you scratch it, you're kind of just left with it. The only thing you can do is repaint it. And it's actually pretty hard to paint also. But let's go ahead and look at some of the damage on this car. Check this out. The front bumper is completely broken off right here. It took a nice impact right here, right into the wheel. And it destroyed some of the apron over here. The hood is obviously toast. But check that out right there. It basically just crushed all that up. Kind of like the M5 we rebuilt a couple of years ago. It was hit kind of just like this. I don't know, this looks a little bit worse. We obviously won't know until we start tearing this thing down. And then it also has some suspension damage over here. Look at all those control arms. It is the all-wheel drive, so it does have a front axle. Not a lot of these do come with all-wheel drive. And that's why I waited for a all-wheel drive one. I didn't really want a uh, rear-wheel drive. Which the ones that came out first, I think 2021, they were all rear wheel drive and then 22 i think they came out with the all wheel drive competition pack which is just perfect because these things make some serious power this thing does have uh, cold air intakes i don't know why this one is a little taken off which it does look a little sketchy that the intake is removed right there i think i've seen that in the auction pictures but i kind of just disregarded it which that might be a problem because i was noticing there's a couple more things unbolted right there you can see that's supposed to be bolted on. Kind of looks like somebody had a tuner on there. And I noticed that there is a bolt missing right here, which if you see that on the engine bay, it's always a bad sign. And hopefully there's nothing crazy or sketchy going on with this car. And it also has the laser lights, which these are freaking sick. You can see it has the blue little thing in there. And I bet those are gonna be super expensive, but you know, it's a brand new car. We got a really good deal on this car. I'll let you guys know how much we paid for this car at the end of the video. And then we also did order already a lot of parts for it because it's been quite a minute since we've gotten this car. But this right here is where all the magic is. This is the full Monero leather. I think that's how you say it. I don't know if that's actually how you say it. it basically has red leather right here on the doors and then it also has leather uh, trim everywhere. Usually this would be like the hard plastic right there. And on the dash, it would just be all hard plastic, but this one has the leather stitching. And I gotta say, that is just one of the best options you can do in the interior. It's almost a little bit too much leather, because you know, all this is red right here. And I don't know why this is black. That's a little bit weird. I guess it just breaks it up, but it also has the carbon fiber trim everywhere, which looks really good. A little iDrive system right there. I gotta say, they did a really good job on these new BMWs. Like compared to the older M4, this thing just looks so much better on the interior. And we also have the heads up display right here, which is gonna be pretty cool when we're driving it. And then just the paddle shifters that are also carbon fiber. A little red carbon fiber right there, little plus buttons. That is nice. I just can't get over how nice this interior is on the car. And I'm pretty sure it also has ventilated seats. Which with these new BMWs, you can get up there in the options. It's kind of crazy though. The MRSRP on this car was like 95,000. Now, if you try to spec it again, it goes up like another 2,000. So every year, the car just gets more expensive. But this was the perfect spec. Absolutely love it. Same thing with the back. You can see there's red leather on the actual side panels, which is part of the full leather interior. But we have a couple of blown bags. We have the driver airbag right here. This one's blown. Uh, both roof airbags are blown, unfortunately. I'm just super happy the dashboard didn't blow because that thing is pretty pricey. You can see it's not just a standard one. You'd have to also find one with red stitching because other ones have different color. Like if the interior is white, I'm pretty sure they put white stitching. So it's pretty cool. BMW really did step up their game with the BMW M4s, but let's go ahead and check out the damage in the back. Uh, the quarter panel is pretty crushed. You can see right there, it took a pretty nice hit. Right here in this little vent area, kind of ripped the spot while it's clean off there. Just pretty bad, I didn't think it was that bad. I thought maybe just replace this and pull that out, but we might have to end up ordering a new quarter panel, which I don't really want to do, because I looked up prices and they're really expensive. 
Plus just cutting out the glass, cutting all of that out, going inside the door jam. It's just a big hassle, but we will try to repair that. Then on the suspension, we'll get into the suspension in a little bit. I'm gonna put this thing on the lift and go ahead and start tearing it down and start finding out what parts we need and what parts we already have. But yeah, it has the quad tip exhaust, so it is factory exhaust, which is nice. I think it might have a down pipe. Or, yeah, it does have down pipes and then it has a mid pipe, but it just doesn't have this rear section, which the factory looks pretty cool. And if we come to the trunk, it does have the 40th anniversary, which is only in 2023. So that's pretty chill. And then the passenger side quarter panel is also damaged. And then I think somebody stole this uh, gas cap right here because you can literally just slide it off. So probably somebody at the auction just stole that, which kind of sucks, but it's all right. We have a little bit of damage right here on the quarter panel. Basically just need to pull that out lightly and try to save this quarter panel too. There's a little bit more damage on this car than I expected, but I just couldn't pass up this spec. It's basically everything I wanted in a BMW M4. It also has the carbon fiber roof, which is freaking awesome. That is so much better than the sunroof. And then in 24, they actually added this right here. Or like the older ones, they don't have this little fender right here, which I think it just makes it a little bit more sportier. Looking in the front, but yeah, basically that's all the damage. We will also have to get a new laser light. And it's crazy how much technology is packed in this little light right here. Like you have so much wires. If you ever wonder why they're so expensive, that is it right there. You got freaking tons of wires. You got three modules. And I'm hoping this module right here is still good. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But I'm just happy that the cooling system, everything over here is basically intact. It kind of just hit the side. Cause I was looking at a lot of these cars hit right here in the frame rails. And those are aluminum frame rails, so they like to just push over. Then you gotta take out the entire motor, replace the entire frame rail all the way back. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started on this car. The first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and roll it onto the lift. We did get some of these little rolly dollies from Harbor Freight, and I gotta say, they are an absolute game changer. So let's go ahead and roll this thing on the lift, get it jacked up in the air, and I think we're gonna go ahead and start working on this car. I mean, why not? We can remove this front bumper right here, remove the wheels and start stripping everything down. Cause like I said earlier, we do have a lot of parts for this car, but we're gonna need a lot more parts. As you can see, like just on the outside, you can see like simple stuff like the bumper headlight, but there's also a lot of little brackets here and there. But anyways, let's go ahead and get this thing on the lift and start stripping it down. Check it out, we got the car on the lift, and I gotta say, the only good suspension on this car is the driver's side front, and you can see somebody even stole the cap. It was probably like one of those floating ones. I just noticed that. All the caps are missing, what the heck? Off the back too, I never noticed that the caps were missing until now. But anyways, looking under here, it looks pretty freaking bad. You can see this is the oil cooler, and that thing looks like a banana. It is completely destroyed. And man, that's gonna be a pain in the butt getting to those oil lines. But thankfully only one oil line looks like it is destroyed. It doesn't look like both of them are destroyed, which is good because those are pretty pricey. But like the coolers for like the radiator, this is for the uh, transmission right here. That looks good. The radiator also looks good. I don't know, maybe. Looks like there's a little bit of fluid under there. And then we have a little bit of scraping right here. Then if we look at our axle, look at that. That thing just got ripped out of there cleanly. And this right here is our tie rod end. Look at that, it took part of the uh, spindle clean off with it right there. But it looks like the shock might be still good. And 
we might still have a good caliper on there but man look at that damage on that wheel not only is it crunched on this side right here it's also crunched down here i was wondering why it wouldn't spin and that is why but that doesn't look too bad so far I'm trying to be optimistic here you know everybody knows these bmws you know the, all these parts are pretty expensive and it kind of sucks replacing some of them but you know what i wanted to bid on the car and this is what you get well this is what you get when you want a cheaper car like this car went about like 15 grand cheaper than some of the other cars so we got a really good deal on it so i'm not really too mad about replacing stuff up here but if we move on to the back right here the fender liner is crunched i can't wait to take off this fender liner and just be really disappointed because that looks pretty bad right there but anyways moving along to the back of the car we have a little bit of a broken shield right here which some jb weld super glue worked that right in not a big deal but the passenger side rear has a broken control arm no that looks like it oh my goodness it broke clean off the subframe mounts oh boy that is not good you can see it just ripped the mounts clean off those things are so tiny we could probably weld that back on make a little reinforcement plate for it but i don't know just yet we're gonna have to dig into it later a little disappointed oh this room is yeah this room is toasted too i was hoping it would be good but look at that right there and the tire yeah, this car is kind of a disappointment, but we're gonna stay positive here because this is a G82 M4 and uh, we're gonna be driving this thing here soon after we spend about four million in repairs. But the, the driver's side rear, I mean, uh, just one control arm looks bent. Doesn't look like it bent the subframe anywhere or ripped any of the brackets off, which is kind of a good sign. But yeah, <laughs> I'm a little bummed out right now. It's a little bit more damage than I was expecting. When I first lifted it up here on the lift, I didn't really look at it. Because I wasn't fixing it just yet. But now looking at it, it's looking a little bit worse than I expected. But we do have a nice uh, mid-pipe right here. And it splits into two right here. I don't know what brand this is. It looks like it's, uh can't really see. But it does have an aftermarket pipe right here. Which is decent. It is a little scratched up. But everything back here looks good. Doesn't look like the guy who owned it took anything else off. I know the factory exhaust comes out like this. So it's supposed to be two pipes, but now it's just one. Maybe it'll sound better or something like that. We're not even gonna go to start this car until we have our oil situation fixed. Cause man, that right there, that is no good. I wonder if it leaked out. It looks like there's only a small little cut in there. Once we get new lines, new oil cooler, we'll definitely check that out. But anyways, let's go ahead and lower this car down and start stripping down this front end. So it's time to go ahead and start stripping down the front end of this car. The first thing I think we're gonna do is go ahead and remove both side rims. Well, this side's gonna come off easy. This side, I honestly don't think it will ever be able to come off unless we like cut it. But we're gonna attempt to take this side off, take that side off. We need to get all the fender liners off. And I think we're gonna start with getting the bumper off. So we're gonna take off this wheel right here and remove this front bumper right there. As you can see, there's a couple of wires right here ripped. I'm guessing that's just a bumper harness. So let's go ahead and get this wheel off and get this front bumper removed off the car. bumper off and i gotta say over here on the driver's side everything is looking really good which is always good because now you have a nice reference of what everything is supposed to look on the passenger side it kind of does suck whenever the entire front end is just ripped off 
and you just don't know where to start and you have to just start piecing everything together. But the driver's side looks good. Headlight is intact. There's no broken tabs or anything like that on there, which is nice. I think there might be something missing here though. I think there's supposed to be like a little knob that comes off the headlight and goes into there. We'll definitely have to do a little bit more research on that. But yeah, basically now it's time to go ahead and dig into the damage over here. And it is not looking too good. I pulled off that fender liner right here and look what it exposed. It looks like it just bent this little piece in right here. Nothing too crazy. I'm just glad it didn't like push everything back because that would be really bad and we'd end up parting this sucker out. But I mean, that's not too bad. We'll put it on the frame machine, pull that out, straighten it out, paint everything in back like factory. Pretty much everything is broken on the suspension except for the shock right here, which I'm super happy that it survived. And look at that, we took off the rim with no problems at all. I'm pretty sure the rotor is still good. The caliper also looks good. There's no scratches or anything or any broken stuff on there. Brake line is still intact, which is nice. Shock is good. Still not sure if the shock tower is good or we'll have to replace it. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and start diving deeper into this car. I wanna remove all of this broken stuff right here. I do have a new rebar sitting over there. So we'll probably just go ahead and replace that and also just start stripping everything down so we can go ahead and order some more parts. Check it out, we got the entire front end all disassembled. And I gotta say, there's not much broken things on this front end. For instance, I need to just replace this piece right here. I mean, it's a little bit bent. Maybe it could be straightened, but I think I do have a new one sitting over there, which we will go check out. And everything else looks good. The radiators look good. The uh, transmission cooler looks like it kind of just slipped out of this little thing right here. So all we have to do is unscrew this real quick and put it back in its original position. It doesn't look like it's leaking or anything like that. And then on the engine cooler, we're definitely getting a new engine cooler. I think we have one coming in here soon. And the engine oil cooler is at the bottom, which kind of sucks because they always get destroyed and they're usually only available brand new from the dealer. I don't think anybody has any used ones. Because most of these parts cars that I was looking at in fours, they're all hit in the front. But anyways, let's go ahead and straighten up this cooler right here and go check out our new parts and start putting some new parts on this car. Fix. So we got the transmission cooler all straightened up and I also went ahead and took off that bottom piece. Now let's go over here to our parts inventory and we should have a new one over here. We have the front reinforcement bar right there. Let's just set that aside. And then we also have the lower piece right here. Nice brand new with the sticker still on it. That's good. We should have that little bracket somewhere over here. Let's see. We got so much parts right here. I got all the bolts for control arms and here's that new piece and then here is the control arms which we'll get to in a little bit but anyways let's go ahead and grab this and this and install it on the car I mean, we're already rebuilding this thing Yeah, yeah, I'm done. 
So check it out, we got some new parts already going on the BMW M4 and I gotta say, I am super happy with the front end damage on this car. We went ahead and threw on this new reinforcement bar right here. Also went ahead and transferred these little brackets over here and everything is looking good. I didn't bolt it on just yet, I'll tell you guys why in a second, but got the cage on right here. This is what holds the auxiliary radiator right here and it's actually pretty cool. There's a wiring harness that goes onto the rebar which is for the horns and check it out, it just literally unplugs right there. So if this wiring harness gets damaged anywhere, you can literally just buy a new one. You don't have to splice anything. So pretty awesome things on BMWs, you know? And I was looking at all the other wires. I mean, there's nothing that is ripped, which I'm super happy about because on the BMW M5, we had one of these uh, that was broken and you could not find a harness anywhere. And the dealer wanted to sell you the entire harness, which was like thousands of dollars. But I'm just super happy nothing is ripped. And check this out. This is actually for the headlight. I've never seen a headlight plug like that. There's only four wires. Usually BMWs have like 10, 15 wires, but I guess on the newer ones, there's only four wires. So that's pretty awesome too. And the reason why I'm not fully buttoning up this piece right here, for starters, check this out. This is the air duct and it actually goes behind the reinforcement bar and it clips on and I actually forgot to order that. So we got one on order and it should be here tomorrow. And also we need this uh, top piece over here. Let me see if I can find it. Right here, this top piece is a little bit bent. Not sure if I wanna reuse it. Yeah, I'm probably gonna get a new one. You can see it's bent up right there. And it basically goes on right here like that and it bolts on from the back and then the front side. But we're gonna have to leave this off anyways because we're gonna have to start doing some framework here soon. But check it out, we are making some progress and it's actually pretty cool to have all the parts on standby. So that way, as soon as you take off the old part, you simply put a new part on and you basically know exactly where everything goes and you're not just waiting and you're not just doing a guessing game later. But anyways, now it's time to go ahead and start tackling this suspension right here. I'm gonna go ahead and strip it all down. I do have some new control arms and I have a new spindle and I would like to get this thing on all four wheels so that way we can roll it around easier. Because even with the rolly dolly, it's really hard to roll it with this wheel kind of hanging off because it hits the ground and stuff. But let's go ahead and grab our new control arms and new spindle. We got all this stuff over here, check it out. Just using all brand new OEM parts. We have all the bolts for these pieces. And look at that spindle right there. That thing is nice. Thing costed an arm and a leg. But we ain't gonna talk about that. Let's go ahead and start disassembling that passenger side and start getting some new parts on there. So check it out, we got the new suspension on the car. I didn't fully button everything up just yet because I was thinking about waiting and seeing if I can find an axle somewhere on eBay or get a used one, but it turns out there's none in the country, nowhere on eBay, nowhere in Germany, basically nowhere except the dealer. So we had to just go ahead and order one from there. I was thinking maybe just put everything together and then put it on a rolly dolly but the dealer said they can have one tomorrow. It wasn't cheap, it was like $850 just for that tiny little axle that goes in there, which kind of sucks, but we can just do a little bit of waiting and then we can put that entire suspension all back together, like 100% OEM. And then we also have a bunch of other stuff coming in. I actually made a big order at the BMW dealership. I spent like $6,000 on a couple of other pieces like the front bumper, this cooler that goes here, and then the lines for the oil cooler and it was kind of weird i took off the oil cooler and there's no oil that came out of here which is kind of weird and there's no oil coming out of there but the engine is full of oil so i don't know why there would be no oil in the oil cooler unless it just leaked out somewhere but we checked everything there's no no 
like uh, cracks or anything in the tubes. But I don't know, we'll have to see. But I was actually doing some more looking over here and it's looking kind of weird. You can see right here, I popped up the engine cover. You can see this plug right here is missing. Well, it's not missing, well, it's broken off right here and it's not plugged in. And then there's wires down here. So what I'm gonna do right now is go ahead and just remove this brace right here. Cause you can see there's bolts missing right here. There's one missing, there's two missing right here. And I actually found those two bolts sitting right here. And you can see the indention of them. They're sitting right here. So I don't know what is going on with this engine bay. Either the previous owner took some stuff off, but I don't know. We're gonna go ahead and take off these bars, take off that engine cover and see what else is going on underneath there. Oh. Right, let's see if we can get this off. So we got the engine cover off and then I also just went ahead and plugged in the sensor, which it did plug in, but it is a little bit broken. So I don't even know, maybe we'll have to just get a new one of these. I think that might be like a fuel pressure sensor or something like that. I don't know what that is. That's okay. And then I noticed this thing is all beat up right here. And then if you look down there, it's completely disconnected from the turbo. So I don't know, maybe he was trying to take this away. And then let's check over here and what, what the heck is going on here? Are you freaking kidding me? The freaking ECU is gone. <laughs> oh my goodness, dude. That is just ridiculous. So I'm guessing he had a tune on this thing. He was trying to take off these air intakes. He destroyed it right here because it doesn't look like there's any damage over there. And now the freaking ECU is gone. I, I just don't understand people. Like why take, I'm pretty sure this was done by the previous owner because I seen those bolts were off in the auction picture and I kind of just didn't think nothing of it. I was like, you know what? Maybe he had a carbon fiber strut brace on there, but now it all makes sense why he did that. And look at that right there. The freaking ECU to this car is missing. Oh, this car is just, it's getting worse and worse. It gets a little better and then it gets worse. But I don't know, maybe we'll try to find the original ECU. I, I I just, I don't even know what to think right now. Just stupid, bro. Like, how, how do you pay $90,000 for a car and then you're gonna take out the ECU and then what are you gonna do? Sell it for what, 500 bucks? I'm pretty sure these ECUs at the dealer are like two to $3,000 if you could even get one right now. Look at that, why would you take that? And this right here is just, it doesn't, this doesn't make any sense because why is this damaged? This doesn't look like it moved. You know, this is on this main bar and did get pushed in a little bit, but it doesn't look like it would move back that far. It kind of looks like a screwdriver. <laughs> Man, that sucks. I wonder if there's anything else going on with this engine. Oh, there's one plug right there missing. That's off the turbo actuator. So he probably had a JB4 on here. That that would make the most sense because you do have to tap into the boost of, or it's the, it's the actuator for the turbo. Which, that is just ridiculous. Why would you take the ECU? Like, what are you gonna do with it? Sell it, get a hundred bucks back? Man, this is, I, I just can't wait to take more of this stuff apart and see what other big surprises are hiding in this car. <sighs> it's okay though. You know, sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them. I just hope once we do put an ECU in it, this thing actually runs, because these motors are like $20,000. Yeah, that kind of sucks. That's why if you ever see a car that's modified and then you see stuff like taking a part off of it, just stay away from it. This one, I kind of really wanted it and I kind of overlooked these uh, sketchy, sketchy things about this car. You know, I was thinking it's an M4. Who the heck would go through all the trouble to remove the ECU out of a freaking car? You can't really do much with these ECUs except sell them for like 600 bucks on eBay, which is, it's quite ridiculous. But I mean, everything else looks good. It doesn't look like... The Freon, there should be Freon. Yeah, there's still Freon in here. That's good. Oh, that's gonna be fun. But there it is, guys. I think we're gonna wrap up this video right here. I'm a little bit bummed out about that ECU and the fact that we gotta put so much parts and time into this car. But honestly, I think it's gonna be a super fun car once we get it all done. I mean, I was kind of uh, scared to even take off that stuff because 
you know, you never know what's going on under there. But I mean, underneath the engine, it doesn't look like anybody removed the engine at all. Cause I know some people will actually pull the whole motor out, put a blown motor back in the car and they just made 20 grand. But hopefully that's not the case with this car. Hopefully it's just a little ECU and then a couple of other wires and plugs that are unplugged just from taking off the tuner chip. But anyways, guys, if y'all enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Also follow us on Instagram at VTune. In the next episode, we will go ahead and put this thing on the frame machine, get all this pulled out, get all this replaced right here, get the new fender on, get the new hood on, basically put this whole entire front end back together, and then we can start on the back end of this car, which is going to be super awesome. I know a lot of you guys want to know exactly how we're going to pull out this quarter panel, but I'll definitely show you guys. I think my BMW M2 was a lot worse than this, so this should pull out pretty simply. And then check this out. We also have this new little pin that goes up in there just like that. So hopefully all of that can be replaced. But if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Also subscribe to see more of this M4.